Welcome to the G Shell Podcast YouTube channel for what promises to be an unboxing to remember. So yes, welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHA YouTube podcast video. You're here with your host, GBHA Damien, and I am here with an unboxing of the Battle of the Pelham Fields. Oh yes. So, um, for any of you who don't know, this is the brand new starter set for the um, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, as it's now been rebranded, previously uh, known as first the Lord of the Rings Strategy Battle Game, and then the Hobbit Strategy Battle Game. Um, this box, as you're watching this, is on pre-order today. So you can, uh, from the 25th, it's available for pre-order and it will be released one week today. Um, we've been lucky enough to be sent uh, this review copy and I am so excited to um, get stuck into this and um, show you what it's all about. Um, to give you some idea of what this video is going to be about, I'm going to unbox this, I'm going to have a good look at everything. Um, I'm aiming this video at both existing players and new players, so some people won't have seen any of the models in here, some people will have seen some of the models before. We're going to have a good look at everything that's in the kit. Um, I'm also, as I'm sure a lot of you existing players will be excited to see, um, we know the new rule books in here. And I am going to have a flip through that and give my um, impressions of the new rule book, but I want to make this very clear, I am not going to be um, divulging everything from the new rule book. I'm not going to be listing all the new magical powers and all the new special rules and every little change um, because I don't want to do that and my hope is I don't think people would want to do that. Um, I remember myself getting the last version of this, the, um, the Hobbit Strategy Battle Game book and I remember going out and grabbing it and being really excited to um, kind of read it and devour it and see how the game had changed and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same. When I, when I got this uh, last night and I read through the book I had the same sort of feeling so I don't want to um, spoil it for people. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of posts out there on the internet um, spoiling it and containing complete breakdowns of the rules and all those sorts of things so for those people who do want to know exactly what's changed in every little area um, there will be other outlets but that's not what this video is about. Um, however I'm invariably going to have some spoilers. Um, there's some things I'm incredibly excited about having flipped through the rules, um, some intriguing little bits and bobs. So I will be giving um, a few bits and bobs away, but that won't be until kind of the second half of the video when we actually have a look at the book. So if you want absolutely no spoilers about the changes in the rules, I will um, flag those up. But um, there's a few things I'm very excited about. And then I'm going to conclude the video by um, having a little chat about how I think the game will now change based on the new rule set essentially. Um, only, my, only my predictions and quite what the, um, what the rules mean. But there we go, so that's what, um, that's what this video is going to be about. We hope you enjoy it um, and we hope it makes you make the plunge uh, into the middle of strategy battle game because if you can't tell, I'm very excited about this. So, um, let's start with the box itself. Um, it is £90 um, to, to pick up the starter set which is a spectacular um, price. It's the same price as the uh, as Soul Wars of it. Uh, Soul, Soul Wars is 95, isn't it? So it's a bit cheaper. Um, and it is, uh, is a similar price to, price to all Games Workshop's star sets. But as we'll see, there's an awful lot of um, stuff in here, an awful lot of models in here. And the current retail value of all the models you're getting is somewhere in the region of about 180 pounds. So you're getting the existing models for half price, even if you don't factor in anything um, like the new rulebook and the new third model and so on and so forth. So um, it's an incredible value. Um, and even though some of these models, a lot of the models in here you, you will have seen before, the, the deal on this is absolutely spectacular. Um, also, let's not forget, it's great to have a box set. Um, when the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game team um, was, was formed a couple of years ago, 
there, there weren't any signs that we were going to get a star box set. So having, um, having a brand new star box set really is an incredible thing and um, I, I just think it's wonderful for the game. It's a, it's a great um, sign of things to come. So, let's have a look. Um, as we know, it's the Battle of the Pelennon Fields, so we're going to have um, Theoden facing off against the Witch King um, in front of the, the gates of Minas Tirith. If we have a look around the box, you'll see that um, on the, the side you basically get the same piece of artwork with the Rise of Rohan attacking the um, Mordor Orcs with the Lord of the Rings Battle of Pelennon Fields there. It's the same all the way around that. that. And then on the back, we get this. So we get oodles of information, as you see. Um, really, really cool box art. Um, so as you see, we've got um, pictures of the new Thayden, we've got Ryder Rohan, Army of the Dead, um, Rohan and Orc, and um, the Troll and the Fell Beast. Really, really, really cool um, set of models. Um, what is it? Is it 84? 84 plastic uh, models included. Um, this is comfortably the coolest um, start set we've ever had. Um, we obviously had the three for um, way back in the day, Fellowship of the Ring, 2000 Lord of the Rings, which were always just plastic warriors. Riders of Rohan did appear in the 2000 one, they were attacking some Urukai, but they were just warriors facing off against warriors. Then we had um, the Mines of Moria box set, which was the Fellowship facing off against goblins and the Cave Troll. And most recently we had Escape from Goblin Town, which was Thorin's company facing off against the Goblin Town Goblins and the Goblin King. But this is the first time I think we can easily say that we've got real armies in the box set. So you have um, a selection of plastic um, orcs with one of their monsters, the Troll and the Witch King leading them. And you have a few different um, good troops like the Army of the Dead and the Rise of Rohan with Theoden leading them. Um, so it's incredibly cool. Um, to, to get two proper armies. So as a starter set um, to get you into the game, this really is great. You really can, you really get two kind of complete armies in here, which is very cool. As you can see, you also get some um, dice measurers, a scenarios book, and the um, rules menu itself, which we will have a look at when we unbox it. Okay, cool. So let's have a look inside, shall we? So turn this around and lift off the lid. got to be done. It is fantastic. It, the new game smell is spectacular. It's, it's everything you want it to be. Um, as you can see, as soon as you open it up, you are um, greeted with a wall of plastic. Um, it looks fantastic. It's um, packed, to the, packed to the rafters with um, toys, which will be very, very exciting. As you can see, all the way around the uh, box room, we've got this wonderful um, ring inscription which is very, very cool and very, very evocative. So, um, looking at this big, big pile of plastic models in front of me, I think the best thing to do is I'm going to move the camera um, so you can get a really close look at exactly what you get in the box. And so here we go. This is the box. So let's dive in, shall we? So, first up, um, you can see we've got an awful lot of plastic. I said A4 um, plastic models. And we are going to start with perhaps the, uh, the least overly exciting, which are the horses. These are the horses for the Riders of Rohan. Um, these are existing models, but we get six of these. Um, two, sorry, two of these sprues of six to assemble. Um, these are these are classic models uh, from the range. They still um, stand up really well today. And we get this sprue, and we get oh, one more. So we're going to get uh, two sprues of those for your for your twelve horsemen. Um, next up, we have our army of the dead. So these are incredibly cool. So if we have a close look at these, you get twenty army of the dead in here. The um, Dead of Dunharrow. Lovely, lovely, lovely plastic models. Spin these guys around. You're going to get the same sprue twice. It's incredibly cool. Um, and one of the big appeals for me, as you know, very much an established player, was these guys, as I don't have any of these. So um, this, is, this is an incredibly cool highlight, personally. Um, irrelevant of any of the uh, new, new stuff. So there we go. So we've got Army of the Dead and we have another Army of the Dead sprue. So 20, um, 20 Warriors of the Dead. Um, next up, we have the, let's go for the Riders. So you saw their horses earlier. These are the Riders of Rohan. Again, these are some of the oldest models in the box. I came out with the original two towers released. You're going to get um, two guys uh, holding their bows, one with a sword there, one with an axe. One with the throwing spear and then another one with the throwing spear. So two throwing spears, two bows, an axe, and a sword. Um, and what's that? 
I'll start with the teasers early. What's interesting is that both a throwing, the throwing spear, an axe, and a sword have all changed in the new games and how in, in the new rules and how you fight with them. So these um, these are old, but I still I still love these. I still, I still think they're great. I'm going to talk more about uh, that the idea of using old models in a bit, but I still think these are absolutely fantastic models. Um, I'm very very fond of them. So there's six of those, and there is another six of those. So you get your um, twelve riders of Rohan. Uh, next up, we have uh, the 12 Warriors of Rohan as well. So you can use these, obviously, in the game as Warriors of Rohan on foot, but they also are perfect for uh, dismounts for um, if your poor horses get killed during the game. So again, two with throwing spear, one with bow, another with bow, one with axe, one with sword, and then another two throwing spears, Another bow, another bow, and two more swords. So there's a couple of axes in there, although you might not want axes as much as you used to these days. Who knows? So there's 12 um, Warriors of Rohan as well. Uh, next up, we've got the same Orc Sprue three times. So it's around an Orc Sprue. One, two, and three. So have a look at these guys. These are really cool. And again, for me, these are a big appeal of kit because I don't have any around an Orcs. So these are all new to me as well. So 36 is certainly a um, tasty little force that we've put together there. Um, possibly um, to be led by Gothmog's Enforcer and Gurex, who have just been released by Forge World. Incredible new models. So these are great as well. Again, I think they're kind of um, of, the, of the same time period as the Army of the Dead. Really, really nice plastics and the core of a great evil army. An evil army that will be exponentially boosted, but boosted by uh, this guy. <coughs> He's facing the wrong way. Uh, this guy, the Witch King of Angmar. So here is our plastic Witch King of Angmar, um, who rides on the fell beast. It's so cool that you get a fell beast in this kit. You also get um, this dude. That is another ring wraith. These are the parts of his hood up here. Um, so you can assemble it as a generic ring wraith as well. Um, it's a very cool kit. Uh, so you get the generic ring wraith sword. Or this sword, or you can have the Witch King um, with this flaming sword here, which is pretty cool. And then over here we have bits of the um, that's the fell beast. Again, this kit isn't um, isn't new, or anything, but it is still incredibly cool. And again, for me, not something I owned. Um, I don't know what this is. I'm sort of looks like an old man on a horse. Come back to that in a minute. Um, here's the rest of the fell beast kit. Um, get the lovely little uh, scenic base, which is quite cool. Claws, caca. Don't know why claws say caca. Um, and the big wings, very very cool. And over here we've got a couple of head options for the uh, armored fell beast, and so on and so forth. Or horned fell beast. You know. There we go. Incredibly cool kit. And then the evil army is further bolstered by this dude. This is a um, troll. This is a Mordor or Isengard troll sprue. Loads of options on this kit. So there's your um, basic body. You can then add these armor um, plates to him. You can give him a big shield if you want to go down the Isengard route. Um, probably not for this box set. You're probably going to want a Mordor troll. And then we've got a few different heads in here. Different um, headgear. And the two halves of the drum, if you want to turn them into a Mordor Troll drummer. And a few different weapons up there. Then lots of other bits, you've got like the um, Troll's drumsticks. Got some sort of Mordor delicacy there. Uh, a few more arms, big spear, this sort of thing. And some little bits and bobs here, spikes and all that sort of stuff. Incredibly cool kit. Again, existing kit, but um, actually again, one that I um, had never put together or assembled. So. That's quite exciting. So there we go. That's all the um, existing plastics. So, should I have a little chat about this guy? This, of course, is um, for existing players um, one of the biggest draws of the kit. This is the brand new Theoden model, and it is absolutely beautiful. I've already seen someone painting one on the group, which is uh, a bit naughty. Um, but it looks stunning. Uh, this is obviously um, the left half of Snowmane. And the right half detail looks as crisp as anything. It's a beautiful, beautiful model, and the community is incredibly excited by the news that this is the 
first in a series of new plastic Lord of the Rings models, so very excited to see what they come up with next. Um, there's Theoden on foot, missing a few bits. And hopefully you can see that the, the detail on it really is quite beautiful. Spin this around and we get, I believe that, that must be the back of Theoden on foot, I think. Absolutely gorgeous. And then these two bits here must be um, Theoden, the mounted Theoden. See this? Looks glorious. Theoden is a... Uh, particular favourite of mine. Uh, he was leading my all-mounted Rohan armies many, many years ago. A bit of chain mail, or scale mail, sorry, before everyone kicks off. And I'm excited um, to see if perhaps his profile has had a boost or two in this new edition. And um, here are all the cool extra bits for him. So we get a couple of shields. Really nice, really, really crisp detail. Um, you get one of his arms, you get whatever the heck that is, looks like a bit of cloth. Try and figure that out what that is for you in a minute. Is it, oh, it's Snowman's head, it's Snowman's head. See, so, yeah, I, I know, I know what things are. Um, you then got him holding the, holding the reins there. And him with his sword. And perhaps most excitingly, if you get excited about this sort of thing, is the head. So there is Theoden screaming. And you'll notice here what we've got are two helmets and on the other side two helmet faces. So you put the, uh, you slide the, the face inside, um, inside this helmet onto the front of it. It's a kind of two-part kit. Now what I was trying to work out, there's also um, there's also another bear head here. There he is. Looks really, really nice. Now what I was trying to work out is if they're exactly the same. And I'm not sure. 20. They are given different part numbers. Is it possible that one I think it's possible that one's mouth is open slightly slightly wider. So I think I think they might be different heads. But the point is you get two bear heads and two helmet heads. So if you want to have both um, both versions of Theoden um, with his helmet on, you can. If you want to have both versions of Theoden without his helmet, you can, or any combination of those. Um, obviously you get spare Theoden heads as well, so I wonder if we'll start seeing some uh, gruesome Witch King conversions with the head of Theoden and that sort of stuff. I wouldn't advocate that sort of thing, obviously. So there we go, there is the new um, Theoden foot and mounted um, kit which is absolutely beautiful and I cannot wait to get this um, assembled and painted up. I've got um, over here, here is the third and that has, uh, that has led my armies to war for, for many a year. Um, he served me well. Um, I've had him painted for about five years I think. He, he took me, I took him to my first ever Lord of the Rings tournament many years ago but I think, uh, I think the time has come for, to retire him in favour of that stunning new model. So yes, there we go. Um, next up, we get um, oh, nothing under there. You want to see? We get this um, this rule sheet. Um, so a rule sheet. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's not a rule sheet. It's a kind of assembly guide. Um, it shows you how to put everything together. Da, da, da. All these little bits and bobs. So nice, clear assembly guide for all the different um, all the different bits. There's the army of the dead. Riders of Rohan and Warriors of Rohan. And then over back to the um, slightly more complicated idea of setting up the Witch King, which is quite cool. And the Mortal Troll. So you get a nice little assembly card for um, everything. And there's your Moranans. So there's that. <gasps> and then we get to the rest of the uh, good stuff, as it were. So let's start with the obvious uh, bag of bases. You need them. Let's just base them there. Um, cavalry ones for the uh, Riders of Rohan. And the Big 16 year one, I would have thought. Let's get in there somewhere. Ah, here we go. Um, so, uh, 60 mil for the uh, Witch King, and floating around in here somewhere, a flying stem. So, you can prop your um, fell beast on that. It's kind of cool. Um, we get some red, green and red dice, which is quite nice. Uh, first time, I believe, in a um, SPG game that we've got um, coloured dice. 
and they're obviously vaguely themed to be um, uh, green for Rohan and red for Mordor. I also think, when we have a look at this later, that the dice inside here are, um, are using the same dice. The pictures inside here use the same dice. So the red and green ones to uh, kind of explore the different, um, the idea of throwing different colored dice. So you'll actually get the dice that are in the rule book, which I suppose is a nice little bonus. Uh, we get a sheet of these tokens, which um, will be familiar to anyone who picked up the General's Accessories Pack. We get things very handy, so we get things like Half Movement, um, Cavalry Charge, the 1 and the 2s are Wound Counters, I believe. Um, heroic Move, another Heroic Move, Channeled Transfix, Heroic Strike, hope that was Channeled Transfix, hope that doesn't have to happen to Theoden. He's got some way of uh, resisting that. Um, prone... Uh, failed courage test again for the fell beast and the uh, troll probably more prone tokens right combat and transfix oh and what's this a heroic shoot and so these can all be punched out so as you can see they're not everything in the game but they're um they're geared towards the uh sort of in-game um uh, effects that could happen within this box set uh, then we get to these which are the um, kind of the range readers which are kind of nice and these are themed towards um uh, the two armies. So, if I just pop these on the box lid, I think we should, <clears throat> let's start with the right hand one. I think you should be able to see them a bit better. So, if you pop this in here, you see you get this uh, this dark area um, kind of comes a lot clearer than when you hold it up just to the just to the air. You see, can't really see it there. As soon as it's on a sort of solid background, you get this kind of nice um, area in here. So, the 12 inch range ruler. And there's little, um, there's little horse icons on here, like Rohan stuff, which is really nice. Rohan decor. All that, as I say, that dark horse icon down the bottom. That's kind of fun. And then very, very similarly, you get this. The Mordor one, which has the Witch King's crown up here, which is kind of cool. And as we work our way down here, we get some kind of a little fell beast icon in here, which is quite nice. And this symbol, which I believe, is that going to be the top of Barad Dur? Is that where the eye goes, perhaps? And the witch key again. So these are nice. These are nice little bones. Of course, we've also got the um, Middle Earth measuring sticks coming out. It's part of this release um, with the uh, in the shape of different weapons, which are very cool. But these are a nice little themed bonus to... Um, to uh, come free in the game, um, rather than the tape measure. And then we get to, I'm sure, what's going to be, um, for most people, the, very, the most exciting part of this, the books. So we start off with this. We have the the Battle of Pelena Fields um, scenarios booklet. This is about, um, about 12 pages long? Oh, no, it's uh, 16 pages long. Um, and it's got four star scenarios um, to work your way through. It's also got um, the profiles or everything that comes in it. Just the profiles, by the way, um, not the points values. There's also a um, summary sheet on the back and a summary of the profiles. Ooh. Uh, summary of the profiles, which is kind of cool. So that's quite exciting. And then we also get this. The Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Rules Menu uh, for The Hobbit, Motion Picture Strategy, and The Lord of the Rings. So this is the brand new version of the rules, the first new version of the rules since uh, 2012. And it is glorious. Um, it's a nice, thick, hardback book. Looks nice. I haven't actually put it um, next to the others, I have to admit. But um, you'll notice that the style of this is exactly the same as There and Back Again and um, uh, Battle Companies. So I imagine it's going to look, um, slide in lo uh, really well just next to those. Um, they're going for the same style, and I'm sure it's going to be the same as the um, Armies of Middle Earth, but Armies of the Lord of the Rings books and the Armies of the Hobbit book. So there we go. That is the contents of the set. So there we go. That's uh, that's what you get. I'm surrounded by it now. Um, this is everything you get inside that box, and it's pretty amazing, I have to say. As a as a start box, it's it's absolutely brilliant. And um, but the best way I can explain this is that if you stacked all the plastic um, up, it's nearly the height of two tariels. So, um, 84 plastic models, all the kind of gaming age you need, and your two books um, to get you through. Really, 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 really good. Um, I thought 
at this point, before we kind of get on to actually the rules, we were talking about the box set itself. For me, this is absolutely um, worth it. The the I suppose the major criticism of it that I've heard online was that the the models are um, they're, they're old models, with the with the exception of this glorious new um, third model, they're they're existing models and. Yes, that's true. Um, we have to remember that um, we have a very small, dedicated Middle Earth team that was, of course, um, Adam, Jay, Gav and Keith. And they, they only have a sort of finite amount of resources, so the idea that they would have somehow been able to re-sculpt Rise of Rohan, Army of Dead and everything else is, is just absurd. There was never, I don't think there was ever the slightest suggestion from anyone that we were going to get new plastics, a box full of new plastics in here. So the people who say they're disappointed with that are kind of very disappointed with themselves, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's not, it's not like there was ever going to be that. And instead, the, so the choice wasn't between a box of old plastics and a box of new plastics. The choice was between a, this box or nothing. And in that case, the, there's just no argument. It's, it's a fantastic, fantastic starter box. Um, as, as I said at the start, I think, I, the existing plastics are about £180 if you want, if you want to buy them now. Um, you also then get the, the rules manual, which is £35. You get Theoden foot and mounted, which is, I don't know, £20 maybe, if you like roughly for a foot and mounted model. That's another £55, as well as the scenario book and the dice and everything. And maybe you could call a fiver. So, so maybe, even optimistically, the new stuff you're getting is, is worth about £60, which means you get all the existing plastic models for £30. So everything you get in here. Um, 83 plastic models you get for £30 instead of £180. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic, fantastic deal. And to those people, again, who, who kind of didn't see that, you, we must remember this is a starter set. This is not aimed um, primarily at gamers who have, um, have all this stuff already. It's aimed at getting new people um, in to play the game. And it, it can't not do that because the value is so good in here. It's going to, if I had never played the game before and I saw this and I knew anything about the price of models for Wargaming, I would see this for what it is, which is a spectacularly good deal with some fantastic models. Um, you know, the idea of getting a fell beast and a troll inside alongside all your walks from Rohan Warriors really, really is cool. And you got, they're, they're great kits, the fell beast and the troll, and they've got a lot of um, flexibility. So for me, it, it's fantastic. And the other thing about the new model and the old model thing, um, I deliberately brought these guys along for a reason. These are um, Rise of Rohan. Uh, I've got a bunch of them here. Um, I, I've been playing this game for a long time and I've got a fairly large all mounted Rohan army already painted up. I've got about, I think, 20 riders and 6 Royal Guards, something like that. And personally, I'm really pleased to get included in the box is these, the Riders of Rohan. Because now, I don't feel any kind of um, compulsion to, to kind of have to paint up brand new Rise of Rohan. So if this box was instead all brand new stuff, so new Rises of Rohan and new Orcs, and obviously by way of the cost was then far, far, contained far less, I'd, I'd feel like, oh, so are my Rise of Rohan a bit out of date now? And for me, one of the joys of this game is that these early models are still relevant. So the, I love that the Moria Goblins that came in that first set are the same Moria Goblins we use now. And the same with Rise of Rohan. I still think they're great models. I still think they stand up really well. So um, I would far rather, personally, the Forge World um, team, the Middle Earth team, devote their resources to making really cool new stuff like this or new versions of things like the Dalamoth Knights that are out of production than redo plastic sprues that are still in production. So, so for me, this is, this is just spectacular. It's, it's wonderful, and on a personal level, um, I didn't have any um, army of the Dead or Moranans, as I mentioned, so I've, I've kind of got a huge army out of it. So, yes, um, uh, for me, I, I, I think anyone who's um, complaining, I guess, about the, about the content of this, um, I think you're, they're looking at it wrong. For me, this is, this is just absolutely um, spectacular. So, yes, that's my feelings on the starter set as a whole. Um, I, I think it's wonderful and um, I would encourage every single uh, person who currently plays a game to rush out and get it to support um, the Middle Earth team and I would encourage you to tell everyone who doesn't play the game to rush out and get this fantastic new set because it truly is brilliant. So what I'm now going to turn my attention to is this, the rules menu. Uh, we're also going to have a look at the scenarios book. Um, I know people are interested to know what's in here so we're going to have um, a look through here, uh, show you a few bits and bobs that I was really intrigued by and then um, come back and chat about what I think might be the implications for the game. So we're going to start with a little scenario booklet and have a quick look through this and see what it contains. So, um, open it up, 
I've got some um, lovely artwork here on the inside cover of the um, Good Forces and on the uh, inside back cover of the, of the Evil Forces, uh, which is very nice, little contents page. And then a kind of basic um, introduction to uh, Middle Earth and uh, what you've got in the box set essentially and kind of how you, uh, how you play. It does jump straight into a couple of scenarios. There isn't a kind of 1v1 um, type thing that you sometimes um, get. So it, it does assume that you've got a feral grasp of the, of the rules. But um, what they're basically designed to do is the scenarios are there just to, um, to get you to build up your kind of um, knowledge of the rules, just starting with the basics. So we start with a fairly simple um, battle between its 12 Rises of Rohan against, the 20, against 24 Moran and Orcs, um, kind of a version of Recono uh, Reconnoiter where they're trying to um, escape off the board, which is quite cool. Well, we then get to um, Theoden's Last Stand, which is um, Theoden and his riders fighting against the Witch King and some and some Moran and Orcs, and that one's a kind of fight to the death between Theoden and the Witch King. You notice that there's actually a box out here that says, because this is a... Um, I don't know, a, a starting game that you shouldn't use anything such as um, heroic actions, magical powers, brutal power attacks and special strikes, which actually goes um, even further to uh, giving Theoden a decent shot against the Witch King if you can't use any form of magic um, against him. Uh, we then have the March of the Dead, which is the army of the dead um, charging into some um, Moran and Orcs to get to learn um, those rules. And then we finish with the Battle of the Pallet Fields, which just uses all of the um, uh, models that comes within the box um, in, a, in a big old scrap, um, a custom scenario just for this, um, just for this uh, box set. Uh, fun fact, um, as I know, this has been uh, discussed an inordinate amount um, on some of the uh, Facebook groups. That um, they, they make no mention whatsoever of what happens if the Witch King's Fell Beast dies. And, and what to replace them with. So um, for any of you panicking about that or worried about the dismount rules, the dismount rules are exactly the same. And I guess they're just assuming that you will sort it out like a uh, normal person would. Uh, so that's the big um, box set there, big uh, scenario there. And then we move on to some scenario, some profiles. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I'm not gonna show you, I think the whole of um, Dale's profile, as I said, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna kind of spoil too much. Um, suffice to say, um, I'm delighted to say that Theoden is everything you want him to be. Um, the Theoden profile now is magnificent. You notice here, if we look at these profiles, we don't actually have any points values. So um, I, I don't know how many points Theoden is. Um, there's nothing to say he couldn't be, you know, 700 points and be grossly overpointed, but I'm sure he's not. But we don't actually know his points value. But um, you do get uh, his profile and he comes with some cool rules. Um, basically a lot of the rules that people were hoping for. He's also got a rule for Herogrim, which is kind of cool. And there's a little um, teaser. Herogrim's a really interesting rule because it allows Theoden to faint even if his fight value is lower than his opponent's, uh, which is a great rule and might give you something to think about. Um, the other thing that's worth noticing is here, if we look at the Witch King Rangmar, um, you'll notice that he's got uh, two, two Might, 12 Will and two Fate. Um, and on here, in this box set version, there's no way of, um, of uh, upgrading that. So the other thing that's worth considering is that these are clearly not the complete profiles. I'm sure they are for some things, but the Witch King um, will have a few more bits in the, um, in the other book, I would have thought. Um, so there's always the potential that even the profiles in here are not completely, um, completely complete, I suppose. Um, what's, what I did want to show you over here is this is very interesting. Um, in the Moran and Orc, um, I'm not sure if you can read this, but if not, it says heavy armor, sword, mace, or axe. Um, so this is where we're seeing that the, um, the, the weapons a model can carry are specified within the, um, within the profile. And because um, again, there's a lot of discussion about this. If you wanted to carry something else, such as a flail, it would cost that Moran and Orc an extra point. So he can swap his war gear out, he can swap his weapon out for any other hand weapon, but it will cost him one point. Um, an unnamed captain can do that as well for five points, but um, uh, named characters uh, can't swap their weapons out. So again, for the, for the pedants out there who like to try this sort of thing, Andril is, always has been, and always will be a sword. Um, so we've got those profiles there, and then we've got a final page here, Middle Earth Awaits, which kind of gives you an idea about how to um, uh, build up your armies and um, what, what you might want to add in, things like, um, they mentioned gambling 
and um, Gothmog and those sorts of things, Royal Guard popping those in. So there we go, a little scenario book. Um, very, very cool stuff, looks lovely, um, but is almost certainly going to be of more use to the players who are getting this as a starter set for the um, for the first time and kind of building their armies up from nothing than it is for all the um, experienced players who have already got these kind of armies. But um, very cool nonetheless and nice to get a little preview of some of the profiles. And so uh, here we go. Uh, this is for what many people um, will be the most exciting um, part of the box and this is of course the new rules menu. Um, the new rules for the Middle Earth um, strategy battle game that combines the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings into one um, game at last and completely uh, revamps the rules from over the last few years. So um, first thoughts, the book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, as I mentioned I'm, I'm going to uh, tell you some things, so the spoilers start here I guess, there will be a few bits I'll discuss but I'm not going to go through it in um, large amounts of detail. Um, I'm going to be um, hopefully just giving you a few overviews, I'm not going to give um, too many specifics. Um, of course there's every possibility that as I flick through it you might see some rules, so if you don't want to, um, I guess if you don't want to uh, have anything completely spoiled, don't, I don't know, pause the video and zoom in on it and try to spoil it for yourself. Um, fairly easy stuff. So um, yes, the book, the book is absolutely gorgeous, um, first off. If I just um, have a kind of cursory flick through, it, you get all these um, all the different section um, titles have these um, kind of lo lovely um, ring, circular ring um, graphics on them, which are, which are really, really nice. Seems to be roughly um, equal kind of treatment between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, both in terms of the um, examples and the um, pictures here. So we've got some Rohan cavalry there, and then, for example, Thorin um, charging out of Erebor in, in the fight phase, that sort of thing. Same goes for these um, examples here. And what I was also really, um, what, what I noticed that I'd never really noticed before, um, it could be that this has always been the case, but I've never really thought about it, is the, the actual choice of artwork is, um, is fantastic. Like there's some really unusual pictures included. They're not, they're not kind of the same stock promo photos that you've seen lots of, and they're really, really appropriate for the section. So if we come through, um, go through the shooting section at the moment, along the bottom here, you get the Warriors of Minas Tirith um, all about to shoot at the trolls as they crash through the gates. In, in a picture that, apart from it being a screenshot from the film, I've never, I've never really seen before. And then you've got things like uh, we're on rolling to wound in shooting, and you've got this kind of um, rather upsetting uh, picture of Boromir with an arrow in him. Uh, might, oh, sorry, too soon for some people, I'm sure. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of nice. So you're seeing these lovely images from the film. Got the Numenor and Archers there, um, illustrating the kind of correct sections of the book as as it as um as well. And each section is introduced with um, a lovely little quote. So we are sons of Durin, and Durin's folk do not flee from a fight, and so on and so forth. Um, so we've got these sorts of things. Um, it's it's a really really gorgeous looking book. It's it's. You can tell it's been made with a lot of love and a lot of passion. I'm guessing that um, Ben Bailey had, at the bare minimum, a hand in it, if not doing it all, so um, huge props to him. Um, but it looks absolutely gorgeous, and it, it doesn't feel at all like... Um, uh, like s the things that we got at the end of the um, Hobbit era, so where we had the Battle of Five Armies free with White Dwarf, and it maybe felt a little like phoning in. You don't get that impression at all with this. It's, it's up there with Battle Companies and there and back again, if not better. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And as you, as you see at the back, you get this, um, this lovely um, kind of colour section um, with examples of all the, um, presumably, I'm guessing, all the different army lists that we're going to get in the Lord of the Rings and Armies of the uh, Armies of the Hobbit um, uh, book, um, which is which is very very nice indeed. Uh, before anyone asks, there aren't, as far as I can tell, any new models in here. There's not any pictures of unreleased models on here. They're they're all kind of exa um, examples. And then right at the back, we get a lovely section which contains some examples um, armies. So it gets um, Adam's Minas Tirith, uh, Dan Hutwell's Isengard, Jay's uh, Defenders of Erebor and um, David Whitaker's Azog's Hunters, um, as well as some sort of showing you how to build these. I'm going to return to these in a bit because I, um, I think they're particularly interesting. But um, there we go. You'll also note that, um, like in the last um, rule book, we get the scenarios in here. So there's a scenario section in here. Uh, the Age of Men is over, the time of the Orc has come, and we get the 12 um, scenarios that were released in the General's Accessory Pack. So these are now all here in inside the main rule book. Um, I, I don't think they've changed. I'm, I must admit I haven't actually compared them to the um, uh, to the General's Accessory Pack ones. 
But I think Jay said a similar sort of thing that he, I uh, don't think they've changed, um, certainly not too much. But um, this is great because I know a lot, not everyone got the general accessory pack and there was a lot of chatter about um, how to get hold of scenarios and they are all now in the main um, rule book there. So there we go. So um, my actual impressions of the book are, are it's fantastic. It, it's beautiful, it's really, really well made, it's really well laid out and it does, I'm relieved to say, smell fantastic. It's got that classic GW book smell. Um, which I just think you don't get anywhere else, but it's um, it's absolutely gorgeous, and um, it comes in at about 208 pages, and it's um, it's a really it's clearly made as a real sort of labour of love, um, with some really great artwork and lots of great examples. So yes, the actual production values of the book and the kind of layout of the book um, are amazing, and I, I couldn't be happy with that really. So the rules themselves. Um, as we know, this is the brand new edition of the rules. It's had a kind of complete overhaul. Um, I think Jay said that they'd looked at every aspect of the game and um, kind of considered whether or not it needs to be changed. And the thing, the thing I would say straight off the bat is it's still the same game. I've seen some, a few people panicking saying, is this going to completely change it? And it's like, no, you'll be able to, if you play a strategy battle game already, you'll be able to play this from day one without, um, without any issues whatsoever. It's, it's the game you know and love. But there are so many great tweaks to it um, and the only thing I can say is that going through this it feels as though it's the game people wanted it feels as though all the stuff that has been suggested over the last few years has um, has kind of been taken into consideration and I think he, I, I was delighted as, as I read through these things and seeing the sort of subtle changes but um, I think people are going to be really really excited and really happy with what they've done here um, there's a lot of sort of stuff in the main phases, the kind of um, move, move, shoot, fight um, phases that I'm not particularly going to cover, but there's things, as Jay's hinted towards things, little benefits um, for throwing weapons now. Um, there's also, in the courage section, there's a really, really nice and simple um, way of dealing with the slightly tricky thing of your, um, your break point when you have... Uh, when you have an odd number of models that kind of used to confuse people because you'd halve your models, you'd round that up, then you have to exceed that. So it seemed that you'd have to kill significantly more than half. Um, now, it, it's a really, really elegant solution that you just simply don't round up. So if you've got a um, 15 um, model army, your break point is 7.5, and that, you don't then round that up. So then when you've lost eight models, you're broken. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really simple kind of um, solution that deals with that very, very nicely. And the cavalry section, again, some nice tweaks, but um, it's not where the kind of the meat of the difference lies. And that would be um, in a few of the later sections from here on out. As you can see, um, we've got heroes, uh, nicely that Tariel there, uh, exemplifying everything um, that a hero should be. Um, glad to see that she was the choice for that section. Um, we've got things here about might and heroic actions. Um, the heroic actions are incredibly cool. Um, there's a lot there to talk about. Um, I, I think I'm going to leave that because um, at the time of writing, uh, at the time of writing, I'm not writing anything. At the time of recording, Jay had actually um, put up all the new heroic actions um, on a blog post yesterday. So they're all already out there. But the new ones are, um, if we start here, we have heroic resolve. Then we have um, heroic strength, heroic defense. Um, and Heroic Challenge are the new ones, I believe. Um, and they've all been discussed to death already. Uh, heroic Challenge, certainly the most, um, the one that's drawn the most um, attention uh, with people thinking about the various in-game uses. And I think what's great about this is, again, the Hobbit rules introduced um, Heroic March, uh, Heroic Accuracy and Heroic Channeling to a game that for what would have been 11 years thought it only needed move, shoot and combat. And those, um, those heroic actions are now absolute staples of the game. So I think you're going to see the same sort of thing here. Um, the, the, you know, the, these all seem new and exciting at the moment, and um, you know, some seem perhaps more use than others, but I'm sure in a few years to come we'll all be using these and just assuming that they've kind of always been in the game. So I think Heroic Challenge is a really interesting addition to the game because it, it, um, it makes you really, really think about kind of your gameplay, and I think kind of planning for heroic challenges and planning to protect yourself against heroic challenges is going to become a, ma a major part of um, uh, game management. Um, so there we go, we've got things like um, will and fate. So, uh, monsters and the brutal power attacks. Um, 
this is where one of the one of the biggest changes come in that um, people are going to be very excited about. We still have the same three brutal power attacks. We have rend, we have hurl, and we have barge. But um, whilst they've all been maybe the wording's been tweaked on them a lot, the the biggest change um, is to hurl. And um, hurl, I think, is going to please a lot of people because it is. Uh, I, I can think of three different ways in which it has been made less effective. Three different ways. So try and think about that, how much actually goes on in the hurl rule. It's, you know, it's not too complicated. But if you think you can make it less effective in three separate ways, um, then you're, you're, you're on to a winner. So I think, I think hurl's now going to be what it, what it was meant to be. It's going to be a very interesting uh, tactic for monsters. I still think it's very, very... Um, worthwhile and very useful, but it's not going to be as um, horrendously devastating as it could be in the um, in the last version of the game. Um, players are going to have to think slightly more carefully about quite well, very a lot more carefully about how they position their their monsters if they want to get the the most out of hell. So yeah, um, that's the kind of biggest change there, I think. Um, We've also got a section on War Beast now, which is quite um, quite cool, covering things like the Mimic and the Great Beast of Gor Gorgoroth. And then we're on to uh, weapons and war gear. Um, very exciting stuff here. We've got some new types of weapons. You notice there's there's nothing for Elven Blade now. Instead, there's Elven Made weapons, which is quite exciting. So you might want to think about um, what impact that has. We have Master Forge weapons, Hand and a Half Swords. I'm not going to go through what all these do. As I, get, as I said, I don't really want to ruin it. But there's lots and lots of um, new cool stuff on the horizon and very exciting to see um, which profiles have these kinds of weapons when I get my hands on uh, the army book. Special strikes. Um, here they all are. Shall we cover them up? I think I should probably cover them up so that uh, you know, I don't want to ruin it too much. But special strikes, um, a big area of um, concern for a lot of people. Um, I love special strikes. I think they've added an awful lot to the game. I think they're really, really good. Um, I, I don't even think... I'm not one of the people who thinks Piercing Strike was deeply, deeply imbalanced, personally. I've, I've said many times I don't think I've ever lost a single game because of Piercing Strike. Um, so I think the kind of fear of Piercing Strike was perhaps um, worse than the, the, the real impact of it. But for those who were, I'm, I'm pleased to say Piercing Strike has been um, significantly nerfed in the way that most people uh, guessed or assumed or had hinted that it might be. You'll also see some very interesting other changes. Um, faint has changed, um, and Faint has changed to, again, the, the, the ruling that most people kind of argued it should be, the sensible ruling, if you will. But um, you'll be pleased to see that those swords people who are less able do have another special strike at their uh, advantage at their disposal, sorry, which is cool. And the other one, that, um, I was kind of, uh, was I pleasantly surprised? People will be pleasantly surprised, um, but I wasn't too surprised because I use it a lot, is Stun. Stun has been changed, and the, the change on that is specifically so that if you come up against this young chap, Smaug, he's going to be, um, not, it's not impossible, but significantly more difficult to bop him on the head with a stick and knock him out, um, which I suppose is fair. Um, if we're looking at it, I, I found that a very handy tactic when I've played him a couple of times. But um, yeah, so stun is going to be less effective on um, massive monsters, which really, when you think about it, um, makes an awful lot of sense. So special strikes are still very much in there, as, as they always were going to be. I don't think there's ever the slightest hint that they'd be removed, and I, I would hate to see them removed. But they've all been looked at and all been kind of rebalanced, and they're, uh, they're looking very cool now. So we've got all these other things in here, and war drum, the, the ring rules in there. Hopefully people will now be convinced that these ring rules uh, replace the ones in the blue source books, but I'm sure someone won't. Uh, armor, shields, all those sorts of things. And onto magical powers. Um, potentially um, one of the biggest changes um, across magic, I think. The kind of army list building, which we'll get onto in a minute, and the magical powers are possibly the biggest changes in, in the whole um, version of the game. Across the board, I would say that m the, the impact of magic has been reduced. That's the simplest way of putting it. Um, we've got the usual magic section in here, how to cast it, how to resist it, and durations, and then we've got two, four, six, six pages of magical power. So all the magical powers are in here. And as has been um, uh, revealed before, things such as, oh, let me see if I can find an example. Um, Enraged Beast. So Enraged Beast is now in, um, in here. So any of those kind of heroes that had um, their own spells 
are now in the main rulebook and they all have a channeled version as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, in the la in, for the most part, the ma magic has been um, reduced in its effectiveness. Um, we've already seen uh, Jay reveal the Sorcerer's Blast. The big, the big hit to Sorcerer's Blast is it no longer um, keeps going through models. It will stop at the first model it hits, um, which will have a, you know, a huge um, impact on how effective that can be. Still a very, very useful spell. Um, but it's not going to be kind of destroying, you know, eight wood elves uh, in, a, in a single cast anymore. Um, similarly, um, one of the ones that again uh, is going to affect my kind of competitive list, but I do believe is for the best, is our good old friend, one of the oldest spells in the game. He says, desperately trying to find it, Immobilize. Immobilize Transfix, I've long claimed was the best spell in the game. Um, it's, it's hugely effective and it has. It's, it's contributed to an awful lot of my victories, but also an awful lot of my losses. And I'm probably pleased or revealed to say, I think a lot of people will be pleased to see, it has been uh, significantly reduced in power. Again, I'm not going to spell it out, but suffice to say, immobilize now only immobilizes. Um, if you want it to have any impact on your, um, on your target's ability to fight, then you are... Um, you're going to need to channel that spell. So that's a that's a good change for the game. I think it's a, it's a very good change for the game. Um, it's also interesting seeing the way immobilizers change. Like if you remember um, prior to the Hobbit rulebook, it used to uh, essentially the channeled version in the Hobbit rulebook was the original version in the kind of Lord of the Rings era. And now what we've got is the channeled version in the Middle Earth rulebook is kind of like the, the original version in the Hobbit era. So Immobilize has constantly been kind of toned down and I think that's probably for the best. Um, you get some of the spells that have been basically reduced in power to make their, um, their, make, make their channeled version the current version. Um, so again, it, it's, um, it has less impact. Some of those spells that um, didn't have a channeled version before, um, their channeled version is now the original version, and um, the, uh, the, the non-channeled version is a slightly reduced um, version. Um, some of the other kind of commonly despised um, spells have been reduced. Things like Sap Will is not quite as good, um, which is good to see. Uh, Chill Soul, again, has uh, the, the horrible, the, the, the age of uh, Chill Soul, what do they call them, atom bombs or um, strikes, is, is cluster bombs, is, is gone. Uh, that, that's, that, that is no more, um, which is delightful to see. So across the board you see, and particularly with these, um, these offensive spells, things like um, Sorceress Blast and um, Chill Soul, the effect is much lessened. And so I think what we're going to see is uh, magic becoming far more, um, far more defensive in a way. Um, generally speaking, the spells that kind of protect you, uh, you know, could give you back wounds, maybe make you cause terror, those sort of things, they don't seem to have been tweaked too much. So it's the, it's the aggressive spells that seem to have been changed. And I, I, think, that's, um, I think that's largely for the best. Um, again, as has already been um, revealed, um, with resisting uh, magic power, that's also become easier. So we now have this lovely rule that if you resist on a natural six, you get to keep that will point. So not not huge, but that will definitely keep um, some heroes um, fighting, fighting for longer and giving them that extra, that extra shot. Um, so that's definitely over the course of a game and over the course of a tournament going to give you um, a lot more will points to resist. But as I said, not only that, but those spells that used to take you straight out of the game aren't going to do it um, with the same effect now. So that's going to be really interesting, I think. Um, seeing, seeing the role of magic in the, in the new era is going to be, uh, it's going to be very cool because um, I'm already thinking, I'm just wondering if, you know, if, I'll, if, I'm, if Saruman in my Isengard list is such an auto-include anymore, which is, which is great because I think the idea is you don't necessarily want auto-includes for competitiveness. You want auto-includes for theme. And so um, the idea that you may be thinking, well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe maybe it's better to go with you know Lurts and Ugluck and um, Malher and just loads of Scouts and that sort of thing, rather than spending 180 points on Saruman or whatever is the way forward. So um, it's cool that they're adding in some some new kind of tactical um, options there. Um, a special rule section um, again, very excited about. We've got loads of rules in here. Got um, three, uh, five. So five pages of special rules in here. And what I was particularly um, excited to see or interested to see is that some that were um, specialised to heroes are now in the main book. So again, I don't know if you can see here, but this is Mighty Blow and this is Mighty Hero. And I think Mighty Blow was only on Thryde and Wolfsbane. 
before. I'm trying to think if, he, if someone else has had it, but I believe that was only his rule. So, of course, what this may, might imply, because not, not every rule is in here. So, for example, I don't know, the, the, the troll brutes kind of stomping rule isn't in here. So it's not like every single rule is in here. Clearly, the profiles are still going to have their own rules. But some um, rules are in here. So I wonder if maybe the criteria for this is that... Um, is that more than one hero can have them? Because Mighty Hero, of course, is Aragorn's rule, but Bolg can get to it. If Bolg gets 10 kills, he can access Mighty Hero. So I wonder if um, there's potential for that. Maybe there's another hero um, somewhere in the game who's now going to get a um, Mighty Blow and, and so on and so forth. But these, again, are largely the, um, the spells you, um, you know and love or, or know and hate, depending on how they impact you. Um, there's, some, there's some really interesting stuff here. That, um, bearing in mind that I don't have the armies of the, the army lists yet, um, makes makes for some very very uh, interesting reading. Um, but uh, same with the magical powers. If we um, scroll back through here, you get things such as refreshing song in the magical powers, uh, with a merry song as pure as a tinkling bell. Wounds of the body and weariness of the mind are forgotten, and hurt and sorrow are washed away as if by cool clear water. So that's quite interesting because that might remind people of, a, of an old special rule that now appears to be a kind of magical power in the main rule book, which is kind of cool. So um, yes, we've got the um, we've got the special rules, um, which uh, are going to be interesting to see how they're divided out amongst other heroes. Um, next up, we have the advanced rules, kind of the same sort of stuff. We've got passengers, heavy objects, light objects, that sort of thing. We've got water, and we've got sentries. A nice return for the sentries rule, um, which is cool whole section on siege engines. I think anyone who likes siege engines is going to be very pleased with one particular change about deployment. Uh, I think siege engines are going to be much more viable in the in the new rules. We have a section on sieges, which uh, is traditional. Lovely shot of uh, Minas Tirith here. It's kind of cool. And then we get into the three um, ways to play, which uh, we are now kind of expecting. We have narrative play, um, which is, of course, the scenarios basically encourages you to play. It, it mentions the scenarios that are going to be in the armies of the Lord of the Rings and the armies of the Hobbit. And um, talks up that aspect, which I'm um, really excited about. because That's how I started the game. And um, it's how I, this, a lot of the stuff I still like to, um, like to play. Uh, then we have open play, which is basically just saying um, let your imagination run riot and, um, and kind of get whatever, whatever you want on the table. And then we have match play which of course is where a lot of us are going to spend uh, an awful um, lot of our hobby time kind of playing uh, with these kind of traditional match plays. So everything's the same, so oh, I don't think anyone was really concerned, but there's been no removal of points values or anything like that. This is still the, the game you know and love, but there is an awful lot of new stuff to consider for matched play. So as you can see, we've still, um, still got warbands and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is probably the, the big deal here. We now have heroic tiers. Again, these have been kind of revealed on the, um, on the page. You know, so we've got things like Aragorn as a hero of legend, uh, Tariel as a hero of valor, and uh, Narzog as hero of fortitude. Um, strange to see uh, Tariel only as a hero of valor, and surely, surely a hero of legend, but um, whatever. Um, so these are the five different, um, five, five different tiers and as, we, as people have mentioned before, the five different tiers can um, lead different numbers. Very, very interesting addition is the independent heroes can now be included in another hero's warband. We actually see this um, in this example army at the back of Minas Tirith where um, Gandalf's warband um, who has, what's he got in there? Nine. 13, 14. He's got 14 heroes, so he's he's um, he's at least a hero of valor, probably a hero of legend. I would have thought for Gandalf the White. And Peregrine Took is in his warband, so um, you can see him down there. So Peregrine, who's an independent hero, can be put inside Gandalf's warband. So that's really cool. You might want to start thinking about your kind of um, army, kind of uh, if, the, if that has any impact on your army list building. Uh, there's also army bonuses, which again aren't in this book. They're in the um, they're in the uh, Armies of the Lord of the Rings book. And then finally we have the Alliance Matrix. Uh, this is a cut down version of it, it's not the whole thing, but this shows you how it's basically gonna work. Uh, as you see, you either have green, yellow, or red on here, you look up your army, 
uh, cross-reference it with the other armies, and you see whether they're historical ally allies, convenient allies, or impossible allies. Um, historical allies keep their army bonuses, convenient allies uh, lose their army bonuses but don't have any ill effects, and impossible allies, who are things going to be like uh, Numenor allying with, I don't know, Army of Lake Town, um, will actually suffer a negative um, to their army, which is really, really great. So um, you're, you're, in, you're encouraged to play what-if armies, you know, things that could have happened but didn't happen, um, and that doesn't have any ill effect on you. But if you take an army that was impossible, this is at tournaments, if you take, go to a tournament and you take an army that couldn't have happened, you'll have a negative impact on your army, which is very, very cool, I think. Um, so that's nice to see. Um, so there we go, there's the Allies Matrix, and then we are back into the, the scenarios. So there we go. And those are kind of, for me, the, the big changes before I um, kind of have a little chat about what I think the kind of implications are. I do want to show you a couple of um, a couple of nice things at the back here in these army sections, which if you scroll through all this lovely, glorious artwork and we get to these sample armies, um, these armies contain points values. Now, this isn't going to be a spoiler for you guys because uh, the Armies of the Lord of the Rings book comes out on the same day as this rule book, so I'm sure most people, as soon as they get this, will have the army list. But for me, this section is incredibly intriguing because I don't have the army list. And because they include the point values and they also include their warband, you can kind of see, if you can learn a few kind of tasty treats um, about how the army is going to work. Um, there's a nice rule in here that you'll notice that Denethor is the leader of the army because he's, he apparently has a special rule. Uh, it's called the rule of Gondor is mine, apparently, um, which is great. That if you include Denethor, he has to be the leader, which is, which is brilliant and really, really thematic. Um, and then, as we said, you can have P um, Pippin inside Gandalf's... Um, Gandalf's Warband, which is really nice. Um, you'll also be able to analyse this very closely and see if your particular list has had any change of points values. Uh, this page, for me, was very exciting. So this is an Isengard list. Uh, there's some small things of note, such as like an Uruk captain has gone up five points. I'm not sure exactly why that is. You know, is it just rebalancing or have they gained something? But this is the biggie for me. Lurts is 90 points. I'll say that again. Lurts is 90 points. He's 60 at the moment. Um, and this just made me deliriously excited. Um, let's, let's, I, I, I honestly think if, you'd, if you did a poll on the two heroes that people wanted to see change the most, then the vote would be for Theoden and Lurtz, I think. Um, those are the ones that kind of people seem to think need the buff. And he's 30 points um, more than he was in the previous round. He used to be 60. So he's got something. He's got something, um, whether that's, you know, fight 10 and courage 1 or 3 attacks or 7 might or whatever, we don't know. But he's definitely had a buff and you're getting alerts now as this kind of um, mid-range hero, um, somewhere between your Uruk captain and Saruman who could lead your armies, which is incredibly cool, I think. I'm, I'm sort of very excited about that. So there's a few other things in here, like we've got the Uruk Hyde bow, um, which you'll see that's going to have some different rules and stuff. And Saruman is ever slightly more expensive. So again, we'll have to see if that's a rebalancing thing. Got um, Jay's army here, where he's got um, Dane leading Iron Hills, Thrandor leading Elves, and Bard leading Lake Towners. And then we've got the Hunter Orcs here with the Trolls, um, with Bolg. Lee. Bolg is a hero of Valor, so he's, um, he's got 15, uh, 15 guys um, in his warband, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, lot, lots of exciting things in there. And then it says what's next, and we have these two um, two pictures. So we've seen this before. Have we seen this before? I don't think we have. It's the Armies of the Hobbit. Uh, it says it will be available in the coming months. Um, and it reiterates what we already know, there's going to be a PDF um, release to get you through those heroic uh, tiers. So there we go. Um, that's all I kind of want to say about the kind of spoilers. Um, it's so good. It's so, 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 so good. It's a, it's a great book. It feels like a real... Um, the breath of fresh air for the strategy battle game. I, lo I love this. This is one of my favourite pictures as well. Um, this is the section about prone, and you've got Aragorn like, lying on his back. It's that kind of stuff. It looks like they might have had a bit, quite a lot of fun kind of picking, descending and falling just before they tumble down that cliff in the two towers. It, so it looks like they might have had a lot of fun picking the, um, picking the pictures um, for each section. But it's, it's absolutely great. It's beautiful. Uh, it's really well laid out, really clear, really well written and um, really, really exciting. So that is the main rules menu, manual of the Hobbit, uh, sorry, of the Middle-earth strategy battle game. 
So there we go. That's uh, a lot. A look through this gorgeous uh, new rules menu. So to kind of to finish this video off, what I thought it'd be worth doing um, is just chat, chat about and um, where I think this might send the game. We also brought here just the history of our of our little game log, which um, is another kind of complement to this essentially. Because um, some of you will have followed this through, but this is where we started. We had the Fellowship of the Ring, Strategy Battle Game Book, um, kind of paperback that came with it, and then for the next two years we got the Two Towers which is about the same size, and we got the Return of the King rulebook, which is about the same size, and then this culminated in 2005 or 2006 with this, um, the blue rulebook, which is where a lot of people started, hardback, um, Lord of the Rings rulebook, really, really um, uh, kind of lovely big book that um, combined all the, all the profiles of all the rules. This was commonly referred to as the one uh, rulebook to rule them all. And that was the rulebook for about seven years until this came along, which was The Hobbit, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Um, rule book, which again is fantastic, hardback, contained all the uh, completely new updated version of the rules as well as all the profiles for everything from an unexpected journey. Um, really, really great book. But then, for whatever reason, something seemed to go uh, a bit wrong perhaps, or we went in the wrong direction. The Desolation Smaug had this really nice source book, but as you see it was paperback again, and it was, um, it was a lot smaller. And then finally we ended with the Battle of the Five Armies. Um, which was this kind of um, just basically profiles um, and not even for everything that appeared in the film. And this was Free and White Dwarf and whilst it was useful and it gave some lovely new models, there was cert certainly a sign that things weren't, um, things weren't going in the right direction essentially. And this is a return to form. This is up there with the Blue Rulebook and the Un Hobbit and Unexpected Journey Rulebook in terms of quality, in terms of um, production values, in terms of kind of passion from the team. It's, it's spectacular. And to anyone who remembers in 2014 when the Vanquishers of Necromancer and Radagast on Eagle came out and we all thought that the game was dead and that was going to be the last release ever, to be sitting here with a new box set is just incredible. It's just an absolutely um, incredible feeling. And so I personally am and just over the moon, like it's, it's a dream come true that this even exists. It's a testament to the kind of to the Middle Earth team. So the new edition of the game, the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. What do I think? Firstly, I, I think it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely um, great. I love the changes that have been that have been implement, implemented. I'm really excited to get some um, games on the table to see how it goes. Um, the thing that strikes me is, I think you're going to see bigger heroes. That's that's my gut feeling. Um, for a number of reasons. Firstly, magic's been nerfed. Yeah, and mobilise, which traditionally would take out heroes, has been nerfed. Um, heroes have more ways of um, of, res of resisting spells, um, so that that's helped as well um, with the kind of idea of rolling six to resist and getting it back. And also heroic strike. I haven't actually I haven't actually mentioned that, but the um, this has all been um, gone out on the Warhammer community site. But the fact that certain different heroes will have um, will only have certain heroic um, heroic actions now. They all come with heroic move, heroic shoot, and heroic uh, combat. But all the other ones are um, specialised. Only certain heroes will have certain ones. Um, based on what I've got here, I can only, only tell you um, what the Witch King and what Theoden have. They're the only ones I've got access to. But that's really interesting. So what that, what that means is, I'm not sure how many people have Heroic Strike, but certainly less people have it. And so again, the ways that he, big heroes used to be countered, immobilise, spells and Heroic Strike, have all been reduced. So I think you're going to see um, bigger heroes, essentially. The other reason for this is that your larger heroes, I mean your big heroes, these ones that are going to be heroes of legend, uh, who I presume are going to be your Aragorns, your Gandalf the Whites, your Saurons, these sorts of things. Um, they can, they're the highest heroic tiers, so they can take more in their warband. So you're, there's a double advantage there because you're more likely to take the hero because they're more likely to do what they want to do on the table, but you're also more likely to take them because they will open up um, more warriors. Uh, Jay's example army in here uh, has Dane, Thranduil and, um, and Bard as his three heroes in those armies. They're all heroes of legend, so they all have 18 model warbands. Um, so I think I think you'll see more of these bigger heroes, which is great. Um, it's, it's really good. You know, it's what we want. Like some of those big people, like like Gandalf the White, and I don't I don't know who else might be in in there. But uh, even even your Aragorns in an army, like King Alisar is a good example, I suppose. Um, Elendil, Gilgalad, all those sorts of things. In normal armies, people don't often have them because they're too easy to counter. But I don't think they will be anymore. And so I think that's going to be a very interesting shift in the meta. 
Um, possibly. These are, these are only my own first thoughts based on nothing. The other thing is that I think the fact that we're spending more points on big heroes, because they're still going to cost more, and having more models in their warband, I think you're going to see less might. I think you're going to see slightly higher numbers on the table and slightly less might. Again, to take Jay's example, and obviously these example armies at the back, they're not, they're not optimised um, tournament armies, but you still see that he only had these three heroes, so I think he only had nine might at a thousand points. Assume, this is assuming, of course, that Dane, Thranduil and uh, Bard still maintain um, three might each. Jay's army seems to have managed, there it is. Yeah, so he's just got those three heroes. Um, similarly, I'm going to try and do some rough maths here. Uh, we've got two, four... We've probably got ten might in the Isengard list, assuming things are the same. A thousand points, and maybe about nine might in the Gondor one. So you can see that I think for a thousand points at the moment that would be considered quite low. But I think you might see armies um, having more, fewer powerful heroes. So not fewer powerful heroes, fewer comma powerful heroes. Um, so you you I, I think the mid tier hero might might. Um, be, be pushed aside. You'll still want cheap heroes to get cheap might in, but you'll want to take these big heroes now to lead multiple warmers, and maybe then you'll see armies that are using less might, which might, that might be a fairly big shift in the game, um, having less might available to you. Or maybe I'm just making it up, who knows. So I think we might see some, the competitive arms race might be this way to get them, to get the biggest heroes and the most numbers, but also get the cheapest might. You know, also find those cheap Maybe those goblin heroes that have three might, those orc heroes that have three might to kind of bolster your might supply whilst using the massive heroes to, to lead lots and lots of warriors. That could be, that could be quite interesting. Um, so that, that's my take on it. I think what's great about this version of the game, there's so much that's great about this version of the game, but one thing is that you're going to see, you're going to see more of Aragorn, you're going to see more of Gandalf, you're going to see more of these heroes that everyone wants, and I think that can, that can only be for the better. But exactly where the meta goes, I... I have no idea. It's so exciting. As I said, I can't wait to get my hands on the um, army list books for both Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit and see um, everything that's changed because um, it's going to be big. I was thinking about this before I started recording that it's not since this rule book, which was 2005, 2006, that we've had a new version of the rules at the same time as a new version of all the profiles. So we're talking 12 years since this has happened. and. That's incredibly exciting. You know, people looking at heroic challenges saying, oh, this, this will happen or this won't happen. You've got no idea what's going to happen because you don't know what's happening with the profiles. And I think over the coming weeks, it's going to be incredibly exciting engaging in discussion with people as they um, try and work out, okay, but well, how, does, how does this new profile fit in with this new rule and, and the heroic tiers fit in with the heroic actions and all that sort of thing. It's, it's incredibly exciting. I think there's going to be... Uh, you know, several months worth of tournaments before we really get a uh, grasp on kind of what the new meta is. And uh, I think that's just incredibly exciting. So, yes, that is my thoughts on the box. Um, I, I've already, I'm sure, gone on far too long. I was aiming for an hour. Hopefully it's somewhere in that, in that um, ballpark. Um, I hope this has been useful. I hope it's given you something to uh, get excited about um, over the week to come before you get your hands on your copy. Um, it's, it's incredible, it's a, it's a brilliant box set um, made with love and care by the Middle Earth team. Also a huge thanks to um, Adam, Jay, uh, Keith and Gav for everything they've done over the last um, couple of years in bringing our game back from the brink. The fact that we're sitting here with a brand new um, plastic box set, a brand new edition of the rules that's completely changing the game we know and love while still keeping it the game we know and love is really, really incredible and I am so excited. So my advice to you is go out and get this box. It's, it's spectacular, it's brilliant, you have a great time with it, and it looks like it's gonna be a brand new, very exciting era for the Middle Earth strategy battle game. So, um, as you know, it's been a bit quiet on the channel, but um, hopefully um, that's gonna change. Uh, me and Tom are planning to, see, plan to return with our regular show, The Planter, um, as well as a series of video, uh, videos examining the kind of various bits of the rules and all that sort of stuff. So you should see more content coming up from the GBHL podcast um, pretty soon. Um, please get involved in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I'll try and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. 
Um, but do let us know what you're excited about, which part of the rules sound great to you, and what if you're planning on starting any new armies or how you think the meta might change. Um, and I hope to see you all at an event soon. Until then, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your Hobbit host by clicking on the links below. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your Hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle game.